Praise and thank God this Sabbath afternoon we can continue to study God's words together. Um, this afternoon I'd like to share a topic which is grasp such a time as this. Yeah. Uh, maybe some of us we have some Jewish friends. Uh, next weekend, March 11 and 12, they'll be celebrating a, a feast. Yeah. They'll be celebrating the Feast of Purim. Yeah. And the Feast of Purim and its origins uh, are described in the book of Esther in the uh, Bible. Right? And so um, we also know that next Sabbath afternoon we have a gospel tea fellowship. Right? And as was announced earlier today, there are a number of evangelical events that are coming up in the next two months. And uh, I would like to share a, a um, share a topic from a share a message from the book of Esther, and also to encourage us to uh, do our best in our evangelical work. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's turn to the book of Esther. Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Esther chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. Verse 14. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. 十三节,莫迪改托人回复以斯帖说,你莫想在王宫里强过一切犹太人,犹大人得免这祸,十四节,此时你若必口不言,犹大人必从别处得解脱蒙拯救,你和你父家必致灭亡,言之你得了王后的
excuses not to put ourselves in a vulnerable position. So Mordecai reminds Esther that escape is not possible. So I think this was a hint at the nature of Persian law at the time. Right? Because uh, when a law in the land of Persia was passed, basically it was binding uh, forever. Right. And uh, just as a reminder to maybe some people who do not know the book of Esther, uh, the law that was just passed was that there was an evil person named Haman who passed a law that the Jews would be completely destroyed on a certain date and time. And that date and time actually is now also the date and time that Purim is celebrated because they were eventually uh, saved from this destruction. Okay. Now Mordecai was reminding Esther the law is there it's it, escape is impossible. Right? Let's uh, refer to Esther chapter one. Esther chapter one. Esther chapter one verse nineteen. Esther chapter one verse nineteen. If it pleases the king, let a royal decree go out from him, and let it be recorded in the laws of the Persians and the Medes, so that it will not be altered, that Vashti shall come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal position to another who is better than she. 十九节，王若以为美，就将啊将旨写在波斯和马代人的列中，永不更改，不准瓦瓦士提再到王面前将他王后的位分赐给比他还好的人。Right，this was a earlier decree that was announced um before Esther was selected as the queen. 啊，这是以斯帖他成为王后之前他们有定下的。Right, and eventually that law was fulfilled, and another, uh. Namely, Esther was chosen in Vashti's place. We can also turn to Esther chapter 8, verse 8. Esther chapter 8, verse 8. You yourselves write a decree concerning the Jews as you please in the king's name and seal it with the king's signet ring. For whatever is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's signet ring, no one can revoke. Okay. Right, so again, these verses are just to show how the Persian law were final and binding. So these, uh, the, 金姐就解释说，波斯国王、波斯国他们的法律是啊不能更改的。Right. In fact, later on, how did they bypass the destruction set against the Jews? 啊，他们后后来是怎么样能够啊嗯违背了这个法律，然后再拯救犹太人呢？They had to pass another law to supersede the previous law, so now the Jews could bear arms that day and fight against their enemies. Right. Anyhow, when we go back to Moses' words, uh, and then what he was assuming Esther was thinking, this is, again, Common human behavior. We often like to justify in action. So, if we look at the Mordecai's words, he was saying that he was justifying the people. Esther may have thought, "Well, I'm in a special situation." Mordecai may have thought, "Well, I'm in a special situation." Mordecai may have thought, "Well, I'm in a special situation." Mordecai may have thought, "Well, I'm in a special situation." Mordecai may have thought, "Well, I'm in a special situation." Mordecai may have thought, "Well, I'm in a special situation." Mordecai may have thought, "Well, and perhaps, yes, given that Mordecai was um, sharing this plan against the Jews with her, maybe she, she, at first she was just thinking, oh, this, uh, I don't know what to do here. I, I, my hands are tied. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, humans, we always 
like to seek comfort. So, for humans, we all want comfort. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, whether it's here in America or in other countries, uh, this is something that you see all the time. Not just in America or in other places. Uh, I, I might have shared this story before, but one time I was in uh, Malawi, the, in Africa. Uh, and, and one day we returned to a larger city and we stayed at a lodge there. Uh, and there were three of us from overseas, um, and then two local Malawians. Uh, and I shared the room with the two Malawians. And anyhow, that day, um, we were doing some planning on how uh, we were per would proceed um, while we were in that town. Uh, uh, yeah, and um, these two Malawians, they grew, they basically live in the rural area. They there's basically no running water, no electricity there. Uh, yeah. And it happened to be that the lodge we were staying in, it had a TV. And they turned it on. So, so and then they started to watch the TV. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, anyhow, uh, many hours passed. I, I think I also went to the other room where the other two missionaries were and we were talking too. Okay. And, you know, I came back to my room and they were still watching the TV. Yeah. And eventually one of them asked me, um, Pastor Samuel, uh, is it allowed for us to watch TV? And I said, you know, it's not a matter whether you can watch it or not, but just look what happened to you once you started watching TV. Yeah, because actually the program they were watching, to me, was very boring. Right? Yeah, at the time, I think the Chinese government, um, it was near Chinese New Year, the Chinese government went to the, their country. Right? And the program they were watching was uh, like the Chinese uh, doing some type of uh, Chinese New Year program. Yeah. Yeah. Like live on a stage somewhere in the country. Yeah. Yeah. And then the TV production it was basically like maybe two cameras, two angles, and then very, to me very boring. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I was just telling them, yeah, just look what happened to you when you started watching the TV. Right. Originally, you were sitting upright, and then now look at you. You guys are now almost uh, lying on your on your backs. Right. And after I explained this to them, then they said, okay, we understand, you know, we will not watch TV uh, when we have to, when we have to, uh, do God's work, right? To me, this just highlights, again, human nature. Right? Everywhere around the world, we just want to seek something that's comfortable and like to just remain there. Right? So, when we go back to the church and maybe evangelism or if the church asks us to do a certain task. Right, or you know how the Lord Jesus Christ, he also has commanded us that we must shine the light before men. Right, we often just choose the more comfortable way. Right? Sometimes we just outright reject it. Right, we just don't want to do it and then just do our own thing. Right. Or sometimes we just do it uh, yeah, more half-heartedly. Right. Yeah. So this is what Mordecai was getting at in verse 13. Right. In our heart, we rather escape and take it easy. Now let's continue back to Esther chapter 4, verse 14. 
Mordecai then continues talking about the consequences of yielding to our human nature. Uh, he said in verse 14, if you remain completely silent at this time, then there's going to be two consequences. Uh, First is that relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. And the second was that but you and your father's house will perish. Yeah. Now let's take let's take a deeper look at these two consequences. Yeah. The first consequence was that Mordecai had the faith that God will eventually deliver the Jews but perhaps from another place. Okay. So on the, on the whole, for the Jews, that was a positive thing. Right? But for the individual, for Esther, who had an opportunity to do something, that's it's a negative thing. Because she misses out. She had missed on the opportunity. She could have been a key person to deliver her people, but she maybe just lets it pass by. Right? And then the, the second consequence, of course, is completely negative. Right? You and your household will completely perish. Your father's house will perish. Right? They will die. Right? Uh, so, um, truly, this, this also these concepts uh, also apply to evangelism and church work too. So, actually, these Right. If we don't open our mouth to share the gospel with others, the truth is that yes, deliverance will come from another place. God will use other people to complete his will. Yeah, God doesn't really need us. Right? We are very replaceable, actually. Uh, right. yeah. um, and so if we don't accept the assignment God has entrusted to us, God will will raise up another worker, raise up another person to do it. And the, the second consequence also applies to us. Right? If we don't choose to do the work and we don't employ our talents to the Lord, then also the Bible tells us we will perish. This concept is found in at least two parables in the New Testament. Um, we can turn to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Right? From verses 14 through 30 is the very famous parable of the talents. Right, um, there were three servants that were entrusted with talents. Uh, one had five, one had two, one had only one. And then the master went to, to a faraway place uh, for a long time. Yeah. Now, after that time concluded, he came back and started to settle accounts. The first two servants, they put those talents to use. And they gained, uh, they gained an equal share back. But then this last servant, he didn't do anything. Okay? Uh, let's go to verse, chapter 25, verses 24 and 25. Verse 24, then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Verse 25, and I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. 二十四节，那里一千的也来说，主啊，我知道你是忍心的人，没有种的地方要收割，没有散的地方要聚聚减。二十五节，我就害怕去把你的一千银子埋藏在地里，请看你的原因子在这里。This is very similar to what Moses,
This, this servant basically justified in action. Right? And then he just hid it and then was scared, so and then just stayed in his own comfort zone. Right? You can see relief and de deliverance did come from other places. In other words, those other two servants. God had already prepared, and they went and did the work, and then gained an equal share back. Right? And they glorified God with what they had. But this wicked servant eventually was condemned and perished. Right? Right? So you can read verse uh, 26 now. Right? But the Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. 27. You ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Verse 28. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. 29. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he who has abundance uh, yeah, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Verse 30. 30. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Right? So here you can see that uh, the master had a very uh, was very angry at the servant's um, behavior. And eventually, as we see in verse 30, he was to be cast into utter darkness. Uh, this is uh, representing how he um, was cast from the presence of God. Condemned forever. Right? So this is one parable that echoes uh, what Mordecai was saying to Esther. Right? Uh, another parable that's very similar is the parable of salt. We can go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 13. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Uh, here is a, a one verse parable. Uh, and also uh, quite familiar to many Christians. Right. Jesus Christ tells us his followers that we are the salt of the earth. Right. As, and then the most basic comparison and the most basic feature of this salt uh, is its flavor. Right? Yeah. Um, of course, you know, there are other characteristics of salt that uh, can also have many teachings. Right? But let's just focus on the characteristic that Jesus mentioned. Right? It says if the salt loses its flavor, basically, it loses its most basic function. Right? Right. How can it be seasoned? Right. Because back then, uh, the salt that they had is not like our today's table salt. Right? Right. It was more a, like a rock that had some salt crystals and it would be salty generally. Right? And so, um, if the salt, if that whole stone eventually doesn't have its flavor, then it's not good for anything anymore. Right? And the only thing it's good for is just you throw it out and trampled underfoot by men. Right? So the most basic uh, comparison in this parable is does the salt serve? Its function, its basic function. Right. According to Ephesians, God has created us. We are 
uh, after we believe in Jesus, we are God's new creation. We are God's workmanship. And that He had prepared many good works for us to do beforehand. Because uh, Ephesians talks about how God chose us even before the foundation of the world. Even before the foundations of the world, God had already prepared and already knew the things that He wanted us to do. Right? Of course, um, all of us, we have different responsibilities, different purposes of why God has created us. Right, so we may serve in different roles and responsibilities in the church and also in our communities. Right? But again, if we go back to the parable of the salt, if God had created us with these special purposes in mind, and we do not fulfill that purpose, it's just like that salt that has lost its flavor. It's not good for anything except to be thrown out. Right? And that ties back to what Mordecai was telling Esther. Right. If you do nothing and you just remain in your comfort zone, right? if you just remain silent, uh, you and your father's house will perish. Right? Just like that salt is thrown out to be trampled by men. Right. Right. So let's now go back to Esther chapter 4. Right. Esther chapter 4. Let's now read verses 15 through 17. Right. Uh, then Esther, verse 15. Then Esther told him to reply to Mordecai. Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Verse 17. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded him. Uh,以色列就吩咐人回报莫迪改说十六节，你当去招聚书山城所有的犹大人，为我进食三昼三夜，不吃不喝。我和我的宫女也要这样进食，然后我违例进去见王，我若死就死吧。十七，于是莫
for a time like this. Yeah. In according to the ancient Greeks, they had two words that can only be translated by one word in, in English. Right? And this is regarding the English word time. Right? The Greeks had two words for time. Right? Uh, one word is chronos, which is where we get English words like chronicles, right, or chronology. Yeah. chronos. And this is talking about when, when the Greeks thought about time, it was that this particular word. It was more about like counting time and how time passes, and uh, it's more of a quantitative point of view. So, for the Greeks, they thought about time in the sense that it was about counting time, and it was about counting time. So, it was about counting time, and it was about counting time. So, it was about counting time, and it was about counting time. Kairos. Kairos also is translated time. Kairos in English. But when the Greeks thought about Kairos, it was more about the moment. If that time was a a yeah significant or not. Is more of a qualitative point of view. Uh, 可是对 Kairos 这个字来讲，对希腊人他们那时候是谈到呃那个时机呃对不对？所以它是呃有关于那那个时间它是不是好。Kairos more about counting it. Um, Kairos more about what that moment means. Uh, 所以啊 Kairos 是在解释那个时间要数算时间，然后 Kairos 是那个时间是代表什么意思 ？And I think this concept also goes back to. Uh, what we're talking about here. Right? Sometimes we justify an action and um, we, we don't do what God wants us to do because we think yeah, we don't know how it's going to turn out. Okay? We don't know if that's going to be the right time to do something. Yeah. And, but we actually will never know, right? And I think what Mordecai was trying to tell Esther and also to us is that since we never know, the most important thing is to always try. How do we ever know if just something that we routinely do, like chronos, Turns into something very significant, like Kairos. Ah, we know how to know. We spend many different times doing the same thing. Is it going to be a good time? Every Sabbath day, maybe we see some visitors to the church. Ah, every Sabbath day, maybe we see some visitors to the church. Ah, every Sabbath day, maybe we see some visitors to the church. Ah, every Sabbath day, maybe we see some visitors to the church. Ah, every Sabbath day, you know, we're like, oh, should I say hi? And then we eventually say, oh, okay, I don't want to say hi. Right? Yeah. But how do we ever know if your greeting, your hello to that person is exactly what that person needed at that moment? Right? Or, you know, maybe we also debate whether we should share the faith with one, uh, one of our co-workers, one of our relatives, etc. Right? Right? Or whatever church work that we have been entrusted with. Right? Yeah, we don't really know. Um, just like Mordecai was questioning, who knows if you came to the kingdom for such a time like this, right? Uh, right, like Mordecai was, was, think, was thinking about it, like possibly, yeah, maybe God has been preparing all this time and you are now the queen. And maybe, yeah, you, who knows if you have been the queen for exactly this moment. Right? Uh, so as human beings, we can never tell the future. We don't know. Right? We don't know how people will react. We don't know people's response. Right? But again, the, po the, moment, the, the point is to try. You just try anyway. Right? And that's exactly what convinced Esther. 
Esther, of course, did not know either if this was going to work or not. Was this God's plan all along to put her in this position to save her people? And so she also eventually has that faith. Okay, I'm just going to give it my all. And she says that very famous line, if I perish, then I perish. So I think um, in, in the next few months, uh, we know, I think we're keeping in the back of our mind, we have a lot of evangelical events. Right? Uh, and maybe we also have some candidates of who we want to invite to these events. Maybe we have some struggles and we're thinking, you know, should I give him a call or do you think it's going to work? Yeah, but again, the point is to try. Okay? We'll only know when we look back. Yeah. And maybe truly God was using you at that moment to bring this person to the Lord or to, to, to encourage a person to be the right word and, and, and encouragement to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think, thank God, there are many members who, who are really uh, in a church who really are very proactive to just try and evangelize and do many types of uh, sacred works, right? I hope that we can uh, follow their examples, right? Uh, one time, uh, again, when I was in, uh, on a missionary trip, Okay. Uh, and uh, there was something that happened that also was a very good teaching to me that yeah I also need to try and make every uh, every moment an opportunity to to share God's words right? uh, uh, basically one evening um, we were at a, a lodge and a local member came to visit us in our room. Uh, and he, he was a member who maybe was baptized for like three years. Uh, and he also brought his like about 14-year-old son along. Yeah. Uh, his son was not yet baptized, had not even uh, been to church yet. Uh, but uh, he accompanied his father that evening. Yeah. And we were just talking with this um, brother to plan for what we were about to do next. Yeah. While we were talking, his son was just sitting by the side, I think kind of just minding his own business and maybe listening a little bit too. Yeah, and well, anyway, but uh, when we decided to um, say goodbye for the evening, we prayed together. Yeah, and one of the other missionary volunteers when we're about to pray, he asked the the 14 year old ch child, "Has he ever prayed in the for the Holy Spirit? Do he have? Does he have the Holy Spirit?" Uh, yeah. Yeah. And he realized no, so he took the, the time to explain it to him. Yeah. And it turned out in that very prayer, right before we. Uh, parted ways that evening, that 14 year old child received the Holy Spirit. And this was characteristic of this particular volunteer. He always was just, you know, just sharing with people hey, do you know about Jesus? And then sharing about. Um, yeah, teaching people to pray, etc., etc. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, just looking back, you can see that, yeah, that was the right, that was God's time. God used him to 
talked to him about the Holy Spirit, and he received the Holy Spirit. So, 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 Who knows whether you have come for such a time as this? Ah, 就不是为现今的机会吗 ？Right. So, um, for uh our upcoming evangelical events and also hopefully, uh, for the remainder of our work for the Lord, I th- I hope that we can always grasp hold of. The opportunities that are before us. Ah, so in our ah, 接下来要跟啊宣道有关的活动，还有啊我们要继续服侍神的时候，我都希望我们可以掌握现今的机会。Yeah, our heart, our mind often may be may betray us. Ah, 我们心里面所想的也许会背叛我们。Yeah, maybe actually it is going against God's will. Ah, 因为可能会还会啊跟神的旨意不不相称。Right, but. And then, yes, our, yeah. Sometimes there is that struggle, right? Ah, 有时候我们是会要挣扎。Ah, but, um, we must try. Ah, 可是我们还是要尽力。Ah, we only know if it was a perfect moment when we look back. Yeah. 当我们回头看的时候，就会才会知道那是不是啊正确的机会。Yeah. So may the Lord strengthen us and help us. Ah, 愿神加添我们的力量。And also. Establish the works of our hands. Ah, 还有啊，让让我们能够为他做工。Let's now sing hymn number two eighty one. 请一起唱诗两百八十一首。